Bring me a little water, Sylvie. Bring me a little water now. Bring me a little water, Sylvie. Every little once in a while. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the start of the new church year. I'm Ginny Sassaman, worship associate for today's service, and I am so glad that each and every one of you is here for this very exciting morning. Many of us had hoped that at least some members of the congregation could be here in the sanctuary today, but the good news is this is a caring community that continues to do its very best to keep us all safe from COVID. It feels more important than ever to be part of a caring community. And we are making progress. For the first time since the pandemic started, the entire worship team, along with the production team, are here in the sanctuary, masked up when we're not speaking. So it's a good day. Thank you for joining us in this time of worship from wherever you are, whether you are on Zoom, on Facebook, or watching the service on your own time. We deeply appreciate your presence and your fellowship. For over 155 years, the Unitarian Church of Montpelier has been a sanctuary for those seeking both spiritual sustenance and peace, and justice in the world. Whether you are a newcomer, a longtime member, or somewhere in between, you are part of our community, and we are glad you are here. One person who isn't here is our beloved Reverend Joan Javier Duval, our UCM minister, who remains on sabbatical leave until the end of this month. But never fear. Virtus LeVar Robinson, our wonderful ministerial intern from last year, is here and will be leading worship services until Joan returns. The sanctuary is an amazing place this morning with multiple cameras, microphones, and wires to bring you the service live, much like pre-COVID days. This took a lot of work a lot of work from the production team, Vic Guadagno, Kenrick Kite, and Bryce Douglas, who put in many, many hours over the summer to make this happen. So many, many thanks to this wonderful team. Together, 
The production and worship teams have done a run through, but this is our first time live with a congregation. Mistakes may very well happen, and that's a good thing. We're learning, growing, adapting, and caring together. So that's awesome. If you are joining us in Zoom, the chat function will be on for much of the service. It is a great way to publicly welcome and support one another, to affirm the hard work and effort of our worship team, and to share good vibes and positive thoughts with each other. For technical issues or constructive thoughts, please private message the Zoom host or join us at, for coffee hour after this service to share them there. Thank you to our virtual greeters who are offering hospitality and tech help throughout the service. Additionally, on Zoom, click on the live transcript button wherever it lives on your screen for increased accessibility. So here we go. Again, a warm welcome to each and every one of you. And now let us enter more deeply into our time of worship with our call to worship. Greetings, dear friends. My name is Virtus LeVar Robinson, and I am the ministerial intern for the Unitarian Church of Montpelier. This is my final year with all of you, and I am so happy to begin the church year with you. Isn't it great and such a joy to be together one more time? Our opening words for the in-gathering service is from uh, Margaret Atwood in the words spoken by the mother of Penelope. Remember this, water does not resist. Water flows. When you plunge your hand into it, all you feel is caress. Water is not solid wall. It will not stop you. But water always goes where it wants to go. And nothing in the end can stand against it. Water is patient. Dripping water wears away a stone. Remember that, my child. Remember you are half water. If you can't go through an obstacle, go around it. Water does. <laughs> As we begin a new church year, we are pleased to have Donya Prince as our acting music director. And Donya, uh, her past and, and her, her education comes from Northwestern University, just a small little university in Illinois, where she was a French horn uh, major. But she has um, directed and founded choirs and ensembles throughout her career. And we are so happy to have Donya as our acting music director. Please join me in welcoming Donya, who has been a member of this congregation for about six to seven years in this new role. Welcome, Donya Prince. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you so much, Virtus. It's truly such a joy and an honor to be serving as your acting music director for this church year to be working with such an amazing, caring, creative, and committed group of people, both staff and so many other people who are involved. And it's really just been a particular joy to be again with our choir, um, a collection of people that are just so wonderful and so resilient, although now I'm in a different role there. Um, as we, as you'll be watching our recording of our opening hymn, some of you might recognize the location as the Capital City Grange Hall, which is the third rehearsal space that we've used as a choir since we started rehearsing this summer. But it's the first indoor one, thanks to a new and wonderful ventilation system and plenty of space to spread out. So that is progress. 
as we are finding ways to move around obstacles and we all are learning to move forward together. So now let's join together in singing hymn number 126, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Uh, good morning. Um, I'm Sally Armstrong. I'm here uh, in Montpelier with my granddaughter Fiona, and we have the honor of being the chalice lighters this morning. So we would like to invite you to light a chalice in your home or a candle if you have one nearby. So while um, Fiona lights the chalice, that'll give you time to find one. Um, and light it in your home. And now, um, uh, we'll, we'll put a slide up and we will share um, the affirmation that's on the screen. We'll share the words together. Please join with, the, with us. Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest for truth is its sacrament and service is its prayer to dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve human need, to the end that all shall, shall grow into harmony with the divine, thus do we covenant. Thank you very much. Our generosity is a form of love and gratitude. Our gifts freely given help us to practice Unitarian Universalism within and beyond our congregation. Each month throughout the month, each month the, the UCM Community Pouch Program, we share part of our collection with an important church fund or a community organization aligned with our values. During the month of September, our community pouch recipient is People's Health and Wellness Clinic, located at their new address in downtown Barrie, 51 Church Street. People's Health and Wellness Clinic's mission is to provide primary care and wellness education 
to the uninsured and underinsured community members of Central Vermont who cannot otherwise afford these services. Your contribution to the community pouch this month will directly support their work. You can make a financial contribution today by donating online. Go to ucmvt.org and click Donate to UCM. There are options to contribute to the general fund, which supports the general, general operating budget of the church, the community pouch, or both. You can also mail a check to the church, <laughs> excuse me, or you can use our text to give option. Simply send a text message with the word give to 802-226-4848 and follow the instructions sent to you. We are so grateful to each and every one of you for your generosity in its many forms. And now another exciting moment. The musical offering this morning is the first song by the choir and director Donya Prince live in one place together since March of 2020. We were masked outdoors and socially distant, but we were together. So again, progress. The song is Bring Me Little Water, Sylvie, the same song you heard in the prelude. Danya observes that it is about thirst and the power we each have to help each other quench it, both physical thirst and the power of community and song to help us quench a deeper thirst. It is attributed to Huddy Ledbetter, also known as Leadbelly, a folk and blues singer from the early 1900s. The story goes that it was based on his uncle working in the fields and his wife, Sylvie, but it possibly originated as a field holler or plantation song sung decades earlier by enslaved people and sharecroppers. It was very special to record this song. I hope you enjoy this morning's choral offering.
Hmm. Beautiful choir. Excellent. This morning, we set aside time now to share with one another those joys and concerns that bring us to this time of our worship service. You may be celebrating something special in your life that you would like to share with all of us so that we can celebrate with you. Or perhaps you are experiencing a challenge or a loss that you would like to share so that we can offer our love and support. Mary Jane Olson, our lay pastoral caregiver, is available this morning to lend a listening ear of care. She will be available during coffee hour and will also put her number in the chat for an after service call. At this time, please put in the chat your joys or concerns so that we may offer our love and support to you. I will not be reading these out loud today, but we collectively will hold them in our hearts. We also hold in our hearts all of those who have died from COVID-19 this week here in Vermont, in my own family, and across the country, especially the hardest felt areas, including California, New York, Texas, and Florida. And globally, especially in Brazil, India, and Mexico. And those who have suffered the loss of family, friends, and loved ones to this pandemic. We're also mindful and thoughtful of all those many lives lost these past few weeks in Afghanistan, and those struggling to escape, fleeing for their lives, and fighting to be free and equal. We also lift up the memory of 9-11 as we commemorated the 20th anniversary yesterday. And we remember, we remember the former President George W. Bush said yesterday, I remember when Americans instinctually grabbed a neighbor's hand. That is the America I know. He also said, and I never thought I would be quoting him, but on 9-11, we were all reminded that unity is possible in America. We were reminded that unity is imperative in America. Well, my friends, the global pandemic has reminded us that unity is possible for UCM. We are reminded that unity is imperative for UCM. And those who are gathered here today and those who are not here but are with us in spirit, we need you right now. We need each other right now. We need the spirit of love, the spirit of life, the spirit that is within each and every one of us. And it is through this collective spirit that we will work together. We will cry together. We will laugh together. We will love and be loved together. And we also honor all the joys and concerns that are being held in the silence of our hearts this morning. Please join me in creating an atmosphere of prayer and meditation. Feel free to close your eyes, place your hand over your heart, whatever is comfortable for you. Spirit of life and love, we hold in our hearts all the joys and concerns named and unnamed today. May peace 
be granted. God of many names and no names, goddess of us all and no one. We hold in our hearts all the grief of violence that is happening in the world today. May peace be granted. On this weekend, we remember those who are struggling with illness, diagnoses, and loss. Loss of hope, loss of employment, loss of life. May peace be granted. May all those gathered here today be encouraged with the strength to rise to the challenges of our time and meet them in full faith that the spirit of life and love will be with us always. May peace be granted still. Amen, Ashe, and blessed be. Now join me in a brief time of quiet meditation, after which we will sing together, Spirit of Life.
Thank you, Eliza. This morning, we will have our water ceremony, an annual ceremony that we have had since I don't know how long that I haven't been here. I just got here last year. But it's been an annual tradition of when we symbolize us being separated for a period of time, going our separate ways, but coming back together once more and mingling our waters together. Waters that mean something to us, that symbolize our experiences of when we were apart and coming back to our chosen family. Before we begin, you have some time. If you do not have a glass of water with you, go ahead and get that glass of water because at the end of the ceremony, we'll be utilizing that water together. As you can see, it's just the worship team here, so we're going to be pouring water for you, and you still have an opportunity to participate from home or from wherever you are with that glass of water. So I invite you to get that glass of water as we begin our water ceremony. And as we begin this water ceremony, some of us have been experiencing drought, a longing, disappointment, loss, grief, and fear. We have felt something that is vital to us that is missing. We have felt deprivation. Reflect on this. And if you are inclined to do so, reflect in the chat how you have felt this drought. May the waters fill this void in our lives. We invite you now to reflect on the changes and transformations in your lives, the journeys that you have experienced this past year, whether spiritual or physical. Think of our own north branch of the Winooski River that rolls by our church building. It begins as a laughing baby brook up in Elmore and then it gains speed and might through rolling rapids. When it flows by my backyard on Elm Street, it is deep and peaceful like a pond. How much it has changed. We invite you to reflect on the ways you are transforming and changing, growing as you take in new life experiences, new friends, maybe even new friends in this church community this year. They are like the tribut tributaries of our river. May the waters continue to transform us. If you would like, you may share in the chat anything that has transformed you in this past year. Now, reflect on the storms in our lives, the concerns, the sorrows, confusion, frustrations. Reflect on these storms. May the waters, may the waters pass the storms over us, just like the hurricane that passed over 
and that will continue this season. May the waters pass the storms over us. We now invite you to reflect on the wellsprings in your life. What or who has sustained you when you have felt empty? In what moments have you been able to let go of the anxiety of this past year? To send those fears downriver, so to speak. Think of those moments of calm, that open you up to joy. Think of those moments that bring you hope and buoy you up. Reflect on these moments or these people. May these waters continue to sustain us. Now, think of how the water can nourish you, how this water can nourish us and revive you in the year ahead. After which, drink the water in the cup that you have brought with you to this service. Feel the nourishment and the revival as we drink the water together. Reflect on this as we drink. May the waters that we drink continue to nourish us and revive us in the days and the year ahead. As we bring this adapted water ceremony to a close, may we send out a prayer that next year, friends, you will be here with us that we will be together with you adding your own water to this ritual. Hmm. I will save this water today to use next Sunday afternoon in an outdoor water ceremony that I'm hosting at Dog River Field. You'll hear more about it during the announcements. And this morning, we won't be hearing from each of you aloud the waters that have sustained you over the summer, but many of you did answer our call in the e-news and on Facebook for photos of yourselves during the past summer with water. And I tell you, it felt like Christmas morning every time I got a new email to open with a picture of some of your lovely faces. Thank you for sending them in and helping us all feel more connected. I hope you enjoy watching this slideshow as much as I had fun making it. It is set to one of our congregation's most beloved hymns, Blue Boat Home. With many of your voices part of the harmony because it was recorded during worship about two years ago. I always have to mention that this music was composed by a 19-year-old. Enjoy and sing along if you wish.
As we draw our service to a close, we extinguish the chalice and carry within each of us its healing flame, the warmth of our community and the spark of hope into the days and weeks ahead. Now let us join in saying the mission statement of the Unitarian Church of Montpelier. We welcome all as we build a loving community to nurture each person's spiritual journey, serve human need, and protect the earth, our home. Our closing words come from the Reverend Leslie Takahashi. We seek sustenance like the long pull of water on a hot day. We crave nourishment with the eagerness with which we welcome the breath in our mouths. We turn towards inner peace like a plant, turning towards the warmth, nutrition of the sun's rays. We stretch towards strength as we move our limbs after too much inactivity. We kindle a love for ourselves and others from the spark ever present in our hearts. We slake our thirst for beauty as we drink in the colors of the sunset and the jewel tones of the last fading rays. And in this way, we are sustained. And in this way, we move to the next moment as it offers its surprises and its gifts. So good to be with all of you again. Welcome back. Go in peace, go in joy, and go in love.